<laughs> hey guys, welcome to another video in LJ's Garage. Today, we are sitting in a 2021 Ford Bronco, not to be confused with the Bronco Sport. This is the full-fledged short base F-150 type truck SUV, the full-fledged Bronco. And like many other people, I'm excited to be inside of this thing. And yes, the phrasing on that is very weird, but I love the Bronco and I've been a huge fan ever since its grand unveiling. And I've already done a little walk around tour of one at the dealership, but this is the first time that I've actually had the chance to sit inside one, drive one and get a full feel for what the Bronco is all about. Unfortunately, it is raining today, so I can't really pop this soft top off and enjoy this nice weather too much. Although I guess I could, you know. Ugh. Gosh, you just gotta love how easy that soft top is. I'm a huge fan of the hard top, and trust me, I'm sure a lot of other people are. And due to a lot of shipping and production issues, the soft tops actually were a lot easier to get than the hard tops. So if you're unfamiliar and new to your Bronco shopping, this one is a big bend. It is one up from the base model, so it has a little bit nicer things like this leather wrapped steering wheel and a couple other features, which I'll give you guys a walk around a little tour and we'll talk about what the Bronco Big Bend really does have to offer. And starting at about $33,000, it's not the cheapest when it comes to SUV starting prices, but for what the Bronco delivers, I feel like mm, it's just at a sweet spot. And if you have been living under a rock, then this is a direct competitor to the Jeep Wrangler. I had a Jeep Wrangler back in the way, way, way yonder days of wee little LJ, and it was a 2001 that was the probably the most reliable, solid little champ of a car that I, well, SUV that I ever had. I don't wanna to dive too far deep into trims and features and all of those things on any of the other trims today. I just wanna specifically talk about the Big Bend. And the reason for that is because if you look, I'll have a link to my other videos on the Bronco where I dive in how I would have spec'd mine and it breaks down a little bit more of the details on the specific trim. Man, just look at this thing. It just looks mean and aggressive. And on top of that, over the last, let's say 15, 20 years, the Wrangler has pretty much just been dominating this segment and now it finally has some competition. Ford went ahead and they took their little notepad and they wrote down all the problems that Jeep Wrangler owners face and they found solutions. They listened, they innovated, and they've done some things that are great and some things that eh, need a little bit more work. But for the most part, I mean, I love this. I'm gonna start with like, look at this. It's got a frameless door so that when you're ready to remove these doors, you can take them with you. Simple things like that, just check the box for convenience, practicality. So you've got two different engine options. You've got a 2.3 liter EcoBoost and a 2.7 liter EcoBoost. And so one is gonna be a four cylinder, the other one will be a V6. You get two transmission options as well. One is a seven speed manual, and the other one is gonna be the 10 speed automatic. The one that I'm currently in is the 2.3 with the 10 speed automatic. I haven't had the chance to drive a manual, but one of these days, you marked my words, I will. It's a little bit hard to get my hands on all the cars that I wanna film, but in time, the cars will come to me. But for now, thank you guys so much for making it this far, and if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so I can have easier access to more cars. So as far as horsepower goes, you're looking at 270 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque for the four-cylinder, and if you go for the V6, you're gonna be 310 horsepower and right around 400 torque. Both great numbers and for the most part most people will be just fine with the four cylinder i think you gotta wait till the end of the video once i actually take this out on the road and see how it feels but there is the v6 option there's the manual transmission you pretty much can spec these and build these how you want there's a sasquatch package if you're really a gangsta off-roader and you need a little bit more than this unfortunately i kind of tailor my videos to who's really watching them and i'm not going to dive into the different gearing options that are available. I won't talk about all the different locking differentials and all that stuff and the beadlock capable wheels and talking about all that off-roady stuff because I have a hunch based on the people that I've seen buying these, most of these don't actually see the rugged terrains that they're designated and built for. And a lot of this is just on-road manners. So instead of diving into all that, those videos do exist. If you're an off-road monster and that's where you wanna live, then head right over there or check out one of my other videos on the Bronco where I talk more specs and features and things like that. But for the most part, this is just gonna be a basic overview of what you get and the Big Ben trim. Some more numbers, towing capacity right around 3,500 pounds. Not bad, not great. This is a big SUV, it is very heavy, and it's not really all about being eco-friendly. 
It's for exploring the environment, not so much protecting it. If that's what you're looking for, you're in the wrong place. But I like that you like the Bronco, so welcome, welcome. And here you have the outside of the Bronco. If you couldn't tell from the shots before, I do think this is a great looking SUV. You've got your cool headlights, your cool front grille. This doesn't have the metal push guard up front, but it does have tow hooks, fog lights, everything that you really need. So overall, 10 out of 10 in my opinion, this is very good looking. And I'm gonna try my best to not dive into too much and just give you guys the nitty gritty of what you need to know about this Bronco. You'll notice that this has something that not a lot of SUVs have. This right here is so if you have anything tied to the roof, you can use these as little anchor points. And it makes it pretty nice if you have a lot of cargo that you need to tug around. But of course you've got a soft top so you probably won't really use that combination too much, but if you needed to, you could. And here you have our wheels. These are gonna be 17 inch wheels. And then you've got nice meaty tires on them. And I mean, you can go as big as 35 inch tires on these if you really wanted, but this is a very nice setup. You'll notice that we do not have running boards, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But if you do want, you can throw on rock rails, do whatever you need to do to customize this and make this your own. I have a feeling that just like the Wrangler market, this will soon be pretty prevalent with lots of accessories and parts as soon as Ford is able to start delivering more and more of these Broncos and the markups aren't as high. Speaking of markups, special thanks to SVG Motors over here in Beaver Creek, Ohio. If you're in the Dayton, Ohio area, be sure to stop in, ask for Nathan, and uh, let him know you're interested in one of these Broncos. You'll have your Big Ben badge right there. Your side mirrors, which these side mirrors, you'll notice something different than the Wrangler is that they're attached to the actual body of the Bronco. And so what that means is, let's say you open up your doors, look at that. You can take the doors off and your mirrors stay. Yes, I know that a lot of people are gonna say the Wranglers have aftermarket options to move the side mirrors around and all that. Yes, that is very true. But just take a look at that. They thought about their customers. The one problem I will say is look at this. You can barely fit a Big Mac in there. There is not much room for error when it comes to opening these doors. They really engineered those well. And just listen to that door close quality. You'll notice that you do have keyless entry, so you can just lock, unlock the doors as need be. And overall, there's not too much to dive into on this side profile. It just looks pretty good. And the other thing that Ford likes to do with this is they made it very modular. If you want, you can pull these off really easily, change out to different side skirts, change out to different fenders, pretty much anything that you want to do on the Bronco, you can. And from this angle, it looks very Wrangler-ish. Is there anything wrong with that? I say not at all. You're gonna have your Bronco badge there, extra spare tire. It looks weird without the spare tire, so make sure you keep your spare tire on. And then you got your third brake light up there, and then your backup camera is gonna be integrated right there, so you can clean that off right there, and bam, everything looks good. No complaints so far, no fake exhaust tips, no extra nothing like that, little tow hook in the back, and again, good looking profile cargo space you might be wondering so LJ pop that trunk open and let's see what we got I guess it's more of a tailgate so we'll squeeze right in here and you'll notice there's a good bit of space I think that's great amount of space for what this is one problem you're already thinking about is with a gate that swings open like this how much room do you really need for this to swing all the way open and I will say that with the tire on here this does have some weight to it Luckily it is assisted, but otherwise there's not much to it. Pretty easy. And if you're curious, cause you're a curious George type, you do get a little bit of storage space under here. It's really just for your jack and extra knickknacks and random things that, you know, you want to put in there. But otherwise, look at that. Look at that. Got a 12 volt outlet back there. And that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote. Look at that. You got little light up Broncos all over the place. The other cool thing is you can lock your door from here. And as a bonus, you can unlock with the keys in your pocket. Something to be expected, but it's something that you'd also take for granted. You wouldn't think that they would have that on the Bronco, but they do. You're going to have about a 16 gallon tank. And if you go for the four door, you're going to have the larger 20 gallon tank. So keep that in mind if you're worried about these gas prices right now. Ford, of course, hasn't given up on their little Ford keypad thing there. And then on top of that, you got your blind spot monitoring so you can 
make sure that you don't hit anything. So that's always nice to have. Very important in 2022. And one more shot of the outside. Step back a little bit. It's glorious. So let's talk about this key lock unlock remote start. Otherwise, it just says Bronco, very simple. Popping in the back, you're gonna notice that your doors, they're pretty simple, easy to take off, no problems there. You got a little cable that you just unplug right there. And then Ford does give you all the tools necessary to remove these doors with ease. And something that's a unfamiliar thing to a lot of Wrangler owners is this says lift, so it's got a little cutout right in here for your little thingies to go, and you can actually move this door easy peasy. Take a look at the back seats. I'll hop in and show you guys what kind of space you get back here. And if you're curious, you can pop this little seat folding do right there. Fold your seats down. And that gives you a little bit more room if you need it. And let's put this back up, pop this headrest up, and we'll hop right in. All right, so I'm 5'9", I'm sitting in here comfortably. This seat's set for my height. So it's not the most roomy SUV, but it is plenty of space for average size people. Once you get to the six footers and above, nobody really worries about you guys anyway, so just deal with it. Cause the rest of us normal size people, we're fine with these normal SUVs and the normal amount of space. So yeah, it's just a problem that is specific to just you. And then you'll see that it says no step right there. So don't step on that. Down here, you're gonna see you got your window switches and then you do have your USB ports right here and then a traditional house outlet right there. If you are old school, you've got a place for your maps and I guess you'll see what everything looks like from the back view. Pretty modest, attractive. I mean, it's looking good. It's nothing glamorous. It's nothing fashionable, but Ford's done a good job with this interior. I'm not complaining, but I'm also not the most bougie bandit and I like the simplicity. Now we'll make our way into the driver's view. I love these little startup screens. They've got this one right there. And then if you make your attention to there, you got another one right there. Little shooting stars and wilderness and outdoors. Give it a startup. And there you have it. You are sitting happily in the Bronco. Your gauges, they're gonna be mostly digital with a little analog on the side, which is perfectly fine for me. I love all of that. You know, that's just the right balance, I feel like, in today's era. But some people would argue that full digital is the way to go. Just depends on who you are. You've got different options within here. You can go ahead and add and remove screens. So I'm gonna add this gauges back. You'll go back and you'll see now you've got gauges right there. Then back to the main area, you're gonna have your leather wrapped steering wheel there. Controls are very easy, very nice to the touch. You're gonna have your lane keep assist right there. So when you push that button, it's just gonna show you on and off, on and off, on, preferably. You got some vents over there, a grab handle here. On the left side, you're gonna have your lighting controls, your parking brake right here. I guess I can show you guys what's under the hood really quick. And there you have it. Look at this. No. No struts or nothing, old school, but look at that. Very basic, simple, easy to work on. This is a pretty solid motor. I don't think there's any problem that I know that's plaguing these, but something to keep in mind is that if you are a person who likes to work on vehicles, you can do that. All right, so now we're back inside and I'll show you guys pretty much everything that you have in here. You're gonna have your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you're gonna have your navigation and you can do Ford's little trail features and all of that if you so choose. Driver assistance, we always wanna talk about these. Lane keep assist, pre-collision assistant, your rear view cameras. If we click on that, you can decide pretty much how you want it. Parking sensors, cross traffic alert, driver alert. It's all there. And if you don't know what something is, give that a little push. Look at that. Is that what your lane keep assist does? I never knew what lane keeping systems do until now. I am very educated and I will share that with you guys. So bam, audio here. A good song. I like that song a lot actually. Who doesn't like a little Phil Collins? You do have the option to get Wi-Fi if you so choose. You can click on your display. You can go to comm screen. Look at that, just simple. So if you just want your comm screen, you're done with that. You can turn it off, boom. Let's go up top really quick. You're gonna have a button right here, and if you're curious what this is for, it's for your trail turning assist. 
and that'll help you turn on trails. Normally, if you have the fully loaded one, you're gonna have all different buttons right here, more different switches, but otherwise it's just your traction control and your hazard lights. So we'll go back and take our attention down here. You're gonna have your volume controls, easy enough, dual climate control, but standard, you're gonna get regular manual climate control, no dual, nothing fancy. You're gonna have heated seats, which is a nice little option that you can add. And then you do have your fan speed controls, your rear defrost, your automatic stop start. And otherwise, that's pretty simple. Everything is right there. You're gonna have your Bronco plaque right here. And it just looks like a little Bronco. You see the little headlights. It's kind of cool, a little touch there. And it's built for tough in Michigan. So that's pretty cool, you know, support America. Otherwise down here, you're just gonna have a little storage space. You're gonna have a little charge port access in here. Otherwise, nothing too crazy. Another grab handle here for your passengers so they can brace for impact or life or whatever they brace for. You're gonna have your GOAT modes right here in this little selector. GOAT stands for greatest of all time, but in Ford's world, it stands for go over any terrain or go over all things. There's a lot of things. Do you guys have any other ideas what GOAT could stand for? But essentially it just means this thing is badass. It can handle whatever you want to throw at it. I love that. Pretty much your four wheel drive control is there. Nothing really to dive into. You're gonna have your window controls right here because your doors come off and it just makes it that much easier. You're gonna have your side mirror controls there so you can adjust everything with this little guy. Pretty easy to use, self-explanatory, cup holders. These should come with directions. You're gonna have your little Bronco name there. This is pretty nice. It's a very interesting material, but it's nice to the touch. You got your glove box there, and then that's all she wrote. Another grab handle there, doors. Bam. You're gonna have your compartment right here. You push this button, opens right up, nice and deep, so you can keep whatever you need to, poison darts, anything like that when you go into the wilderness. Very nice to the touch yet again. Ford already knows that if you're into off-roading, you're gonna need these auxiliary switches and you want it to look factory and clean. So everything is already pre-wired and pre-set up for you. Next to those, you're gonna have your visor right here. Pop this open, you've got a light. You'll see me close this up. And that's it. And of course, it's raining. So I apologize in advance for any of the shots I get that may seem rushed. It's because it's raining. Check my rear seat for occupants. Ghosts. I do want to point out that this backup camera is not the best. All right, I found some little empty roads here. And whew. oh, yeah. And this is in the rain. This is plenty. Does it ever feel like it's missing any power? No, I wouldn't say so. And overall, this just feels good on the road. The turbo is going. Ooh. It's okay. It's a little bumpy, but it is comfortable. I guess it's really gonna depend on what you're familiar with driving. Cause if you're familiar with SUVs and this rugged feel, then this has great on-road manners. If you're coming from, um, I don't know, a Land Rover, then it's gonna be a little bit of a difference for something that's uh, a little bit more simplistic, I guess is the word. But when it comes to power though, you're not gonna be hurting. You're not gonna be crying. If you've been in anything with a soft top, you know that quiet and soft top only go together, never really. So lane keep assist works pretty well. We've got that on right now. I really do like driving the Bronco and I enjoy what this has to offer. So a few things that I wanna mention about driving the Bronco. As far as acceleration goes, you'll be just fine with the 2.3 liter. And most people won't mind not having the larger V6 because it's not that much larger and the power difference is not that different. 270 horsepower to 310, you'll notice it a little bit, but you're not gonna be dying for more power. One, even with the V6, this thing is not that fast. Now, did I have any problems with the four cylinder? No. Ford's EcoBoost is a strong motor. With that being said, I don't have a lot of key things to dial in on other than it's comfortable. It has great on-road manners. I don't feel that it's too large. If you're familiar with the Wranglers, if you're familiar with any SUVs, 
then you're familiar with driving something a little bit larger. Without the steps or the running boards, you do sit kind of high up. So that's something that you have to keep in mind if you have kids that you're gonna be constantly getting in and out of this thing, you're gonna to wanna to have running boards or side steps or something because it does sit pretty high with the amount of tire that you get with these. You have just enough modern features to not feel like you're missing out on living in 2022. The lane keep assist does a great job. On top of that, all the other safety features, I'm not gonna test any of them out right now, like forward collision avoidance, as much as you guys would love to see that for a YouTube video, no. I know that Ford has a pretty solid reputation when it comes to safety, so I don't have any key things to point out there. Bang for buck, this is a pretty good trim. It's not fully loaded, and yes, this can get into the 50s, 60s, 70s very, very easily. And for most people, this is actually plenty. I would have one of these for a little, if it wasn't for the market price right now, I would have one of these in a heartbeat. I would love to have one of these with a manual to just really enjoy it. And chances are I'd be more doing sand driving in Florida more than anything when it comes to off-road. Otherwise, after driving it, I'm still in love. I, I do really like the Ford Bronco. And if I had to choose between this and a Wrangler, I think this has more, I guess, clout. It is cooler. And I think the problems that they've addressed in this make it that much better than the Wrangler. And no, this isn't a Ford paid sponsorship. I do genuinely enjoy the time that I've spent in this. And I think a lot of people will. And I'm glad that the next Bronco and the next Wrangler are gonna be neck and neck. Jeep's really gonna have to step it up and it's about time. Otherwise, thank you so much for checking out yet another video in LJ's Garage. Be sure to hit that like button, comment button, subscribe button if you have any questions, comments, concerns. You know, this is what you get for around $40,000 in a Bronco. So let me know what you think. Let me know if it's worthwhile and why you're a diehard Jeep fan if you somehow stumbled upon this video. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thank you so much. See you then.